Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of We Need to Talk. We are back from our holiday break and officially kicking off Pride Month. And who better to start this conversation than the founders of the LGBTQ plus social media collective Pride House LA. Joining me on the show today are Molly Gray, her husband, Jekka Jane, Garrett Clayton, and Kent Boyd. Everyone, welcome to the show. Hey, yeah. Yes, happy pride. I was going through your TikTok and your Instagram and I just I could not help but just smile and dance and feel all of the joy that you all are exuding in your content. I really love everything that you're creating and I think one of the the things I loved is that you found your people and I think that's such an important part of everybody's journey is finding your people finding your community so and I know you guys all a lot of you work together on the team beach franchise so what was it just kind of about each other that made you want to start this collective and even after finishing filming you're like hey we should do something together because there was a real connection there yeah it really just kind of happened over quarantine we were just like every other person who got TikTok, you know, during quarantine. Yeah. <laughs> this business was going down. Yeah, so <laughs> right. we decided to kind of meet up and we did like a Team Beach thing just because that's what we thought maybe people would <laughs> recognize us from. But then, um, yeah, we realized like, oh, we want to be together as a group. And we mm-hmm. started doing it in June, like a little bit right before June. And we made Pride House last June. So mm-hmm. we just like met at the beach and did some Team Beach movie stuff. And then we brought a bunch of rainbow mm-hmm. and we were like, let's yeah. just be super yeah. gay and let's be like <laughs> yeah we had these fan torches and it just it was fun to just to create again I think that was really mm-hmm. cool to bring us all there and there was like an objective to like make content and it felt so kind of nostalgic and yeah. then it was so kind of fun to just to be at it again and I think that was kind of the beauty in the breakdown when it comes to the quarantine it really kind of forced the new light and a new energy and we've always bonded over our queerness that was something that we'd always kind of you know it connects you it's, it's what builds our community and I think that's what's so fun about being this inclusive house because it can connect even more people who feel and believe similar or in some way of what we do yeah. and, and what's crazy is even when we were on the beach to creating the you know like the giant gold fans <laughs> and everything it was before we even thought that Pride House or it was before like even the the concept of it was gonna become a thing and even for myself I I didn't that was the first time I started even making a queer content yeah. like and I felt safe enough with these people to right. make it like I never I, I did I did a lot of uh, queer theater, but I never made actual content that is literally for the online market. Yeah, and, and, I, market sure. and I really felt safe with these three people, and um, and, and it just kept snowballing, and we kept wanting to meet with, meet up with each other each and week. We, and uh, we had some zip zips too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was really cool. I it love was. that, Jekka. You go for it. Why did you decide to be a part of Fright House LA? Um, I don't know. I feel like I was, well, I wasn't in the movie, obviously. Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> but, um, I mean, Molly and I have been married for three, almost, almost four years now. Four years. <laughs> <Get the> number. <laughs> yes. I'm going to get it right. Pop quiz. But I feel like I just kind of, it just landed, like I landed here, and I think I'm just happy to be part of it, and I feel like I represent the T in LGBTQ, so I'm just, like, happy to represent for the t- trans community. I love yeah. that. Garrett, I want to follow up on something that you said that you finally felt safe and comfortable making queer content. In in any of you can answer that, but in your own personal journeys, how long did it take for you to really feel comfortable with your identity and speaking out? Because you're all public figures at this point. And I know for a lot of people, it it really can save their lives when people that are celebrities and public figures come out and say, this is who I am and they're standing in their true identity. So when did you all get to that point where you felt comfortable being who you are in public? Good question. Yeah, that's a great yeah. question. For me, I, um, it was actually when we were getting married, we, um, I was just scared because we were at the time of uh, same sex couple presenting same co- sex couple. So I, I didn't know how, people were going to take it. I also was just filming a faith-based movie that's um, out on Netflix now. And I just, it was very faith-based. So it was very like, um, not like homophobic, but it definitely felt a little bit like that. Like you could, yeah, you could not, I, like if I came out, I was like, oh my gosh, they're going to kill me. Like they're going to hate me. (laughs) And then, um, I was talking to Jess, our publicist, and I was just like, I just don't want to, I'm too scared. I'm afraid what it's going to do to my career. This movie's about to come out. It's going to be this huge movie. And it's, I'm representing, you know, this faith-based whatever. 
And she was just like, no, this is the most important day of your life. You're getting married to the love of your life. You need to honor that and you need to feel comfortable doing so. And if they don't approve of it, then that's not a project you want to be a part of, stuff like that. You know, you don't want to be around people. And I'm like, at this point, I was just like, you know what? Yeah, I'm getting too old to care about if you approve of my lifestyle in order for me to post it on social media. So it was really Jessica who gave me the courage to just say, come out. And I did, I did publicly and I did through people magazine, which was crazy. And then that producer called me and was like, what? Um, (laughs) But it just felt good. Like, honestly, just having like a good team behind you and good friends really made me come out. So publicly, I just came out maybe four years ago. Yeah. And I think that that's a, a true statement that she made saying like, you know, if they don't support you, those aren't the people that you want in your corner anyway. You know, yeah. not, that's not the demographic that you want. You don't want to be someone that you're not. So I love that you came to terms with that. Kent, yeah. what about you? Um, mine was fun. I I also came from um, not really a religious background, but my brother is like, it was, we're all in service. I feel like my whole family, like we're teachers, we're nurses, we're pastors, we're dancers. It's a, it's a really good community what, of what my parents, I think, created. But I came out to them. I came out to my sister first. Um, and it was like when I had moved out is I had been paying my own rent. I had felt like an adult and I felt like finally, OK, like I can make this choice. I can live and I can stand by it wholeheartedly. Like I can. Uh, this is the lifestyle I choose. This is the, the idea that I want and I believe in. And I think that happened to me around 22. And they were all there. It felt like my brother, my brother's wife, my sister, my mom, my dad. And I was just like quivering at the lips. And I was just like, yo, you guys, like I'm gay. And it just, it immediately, like my ears popped. And then I just was floating and it was so nice. It was cool. And then my sister was so sweet about it. And then the funny thing was, is my dad knew because I had a computer in my room and there was stuff on the computer. (laughs) (laughs) I was just waiting for you to say something anyway. (laughs) <laughs> you know, like that was kind of nice. My dad kind of knew, which I was kind of most, I was scared about him, I think, just because it's like a, a man to man thing. I was yeah. some, maybe something in my head, but, yeah. and my mother was a little like, what? I didn't know that. And then they were just like, I'm so happy you told us. Boom. Aww. And then we were sad. That's beautiful. Oh, well, for me, it, it feels like I've had waves of the, the, like different basic uh, it's so it's so weird because I I basically I pretty much to the really close people in my life I came out at 16 Mm -hmm. but the publicly I didn't and then you know like I was like secretly a club kid and nobody I don't think anyone even knows that about me like I had a fake ID my friend Tony El Jihad gave me his ID that boy boy. long live Tony don't do that kid (laughs) and so I was like I was like sneaking into clubs and I was being like this I was like secretly like living my best life and yeah but then I and then I went to college and I was fully out I came to Hollywood I was put back in the closet and then I was secretly in a relationship for seven years and nobody knew and I was trying to balance living that life while trying to be something I wasn't and I was being coached on how to be that person that I I was trying to portray and I mean everything from the way I walked the way I spoke the way I dressed the way I posed in pictures the way I answered questions who I hung out with what I told what I told what what I even talked to them about it was like every level of my life was manicured and then Mm. I kind of got to the point where my with my now fiance I was like I think I'm ready to come out and he said well, why now and I was like honestly I just I think we are too happy and it feels disrespectful to our love and Fire. to like what we can represent in this community of like because people always tell us they're like you've been together 10 years that's like 100 and gay years I'm like <laughs> Yeah, and like it's a it is a funny it's it, it, it is funny when I hear it but also at the same time I'm like but we're still just people who've lasted 10 years right, you know it's, right. and, and that in itself in this city is like you know Molly and Jekka can attest to this it's like being in a long-term relationship in this industry in the city is like regardless of your sexuality your gender your like it, it's just it's really it's difficult. a triumph to yeah. Yeah. make it yeah yeah, yeah. Yes. and so I finally came right. to terms with that and then I was starting to do queer theater and then my friends right next to me gave me the confidence to be more vocal about my personal life and it really feels like the confidence came in waves for me and it felt like I was making those decisions best for myself. And I think people need to know, like, you have to do things in your comfort level in your time period. If you can be in in public service to support people in your community, by all means do it. But if you're not ready for that, you have to do it in your time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, see, for me, I had the um, I had to come out twice. So I, <laughs> in high school, I came out as a lesbian, but then I always kind of felt like that didn't fit like right. But it was like the closest in my like for at the time it was like the closest thing feel, to feel right. Yeah, yeah. And I came out as trans two almost two years ago, and then that's when I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is this feels way 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 yeah. more, way more right. And I remember. Um, trying to find like a lot of information on like testosterone and top surgery and um, there wasn't so much information like even like on YouTube or just like people that I would follow because I feel like a lot of people um, um, more talked about like the the end part of it like the beauty the beauty and also the, and not so much the struggle and, um, and all that so uh, Molly and I created a YouTube and I was like at first it was like let's make a, a blog YouTube or vlog YouTube but then it started slowly started turning into more like information on like how uh, um where you can get um safely testosterone like tops all like all the ups and downs of top surgery and like all this stuff. so i feel like it was cool to be having kids. yeah having kids and like we did a whole fertility um about taking out my eggs and making embryos and like all that stuff so it was cool like, educational yeah super educational and put it put information out there that i was looking for so somebody else can find it and stuff like but, that so just like yeah it was, so that was all that's kind of cool for me that's yeah. incredible. I what I love one is that all of your stories are different and unique, and I think that that's also just a testament to the communities that everybody's story is their own. And yeah. how are you personally using your stories to inspire other young teens and other young kids that may feel scared or they don't know what to do? But like you said, you know, Jack and Molly with your YouTube, you're using it as a means of information and education. So how are you using your your personal stories in that way? Mm -hmm. I love this question. Yeah, that's I have, I have something to say. Yeah. Um, a lot of us uh, also teach. We teach a lot of dance and we'll travel and we'll go and we'll have these massive ballrooms of like 400 kids and they'll be in all different age ranges. And what it's really interesting is in, in that moment, we're the teacher, we have the mic, we're setting the tone, we're, you know, demonstrating the moves, we pick the music. So we're really kind of the leader in that way. Mm -hmm. And obviously you're giving this community of dancers and artists that are are young and they're kind of the more expressive experimental of their region or wherever it is and to kind of see it as we kind of progress kind of the the ideas of these binary structures and how these kids are are changing and morphing and how we're allowing and adjusting because there is a system and and, and we just have to work on continue like continuing to change and alter or guide and shift and that's something we do, like, even in dance, we're always splitting up masculine and female, or, like, female and men, like, we'll, girls and boys, that will audition separately, and then there's this, uh, uh, this new, this category, it's not new, it's just there, and it's becoming even more popular in the, the younger community, because they're free to express now, and it's so lovely, like, to kind of see how we're going to brand, or how we talk, or how we speak, or how we listen to this generation, that I think is going to be so expressive if we allow this. And I also think, too, it's changing to kind of piggyback off what Kent said. Yeah, it's a lot there, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, like, it's changing the conversations with parents, too. I just was teaching in um, Beaumont, Texas, which is a very more, you know, religious area, and um, the conversations aren't, you know, as maybe progressive as they are in LA. So this mom came up to me and she's like, I just need to stop you for a second. And she said, I just want to thank you. And I could, at first I got nervous. I was like, Oh my gosh, what happened? Cause she was an older, an older person and she was very sweet. But she said, um, you and your relationship with Jekka had changed conversations in in my home. And, um, I really respect you for that. And, you know, it's, it's very different to what I grew up with, you know? So she said, something that was super nice she goes um I now view love as love rather than as a relationship um setting essentially so she said it was it was really nice to watch Jekka and I on social media and just see that it's love and how happy we are she was like I I never would have thought of that in that type of relationship and it's just you guys changed that conversation for me and now she's having those conversations with her with her kid and how there's like you know, there's different love other than just male and female. Right. You know, which I thought was really cool. Love is love. Okay. That is love. That is amazing. It is, absolutely. And I think what I also love about 
Pride House LA and what you guys are building is that you are allowing people, you're giving people permission to just be themselves. And do you ever think we will get to a point in society where you don't have to come out, where you can just live and be who you are? Yeah, yeah I, I, think think so. yeah. I think that's the hope. I think there's always going to be curiosity and people out of curiosity will always ask questions. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's how those questions are asked that can be altered or just yeah. letting people exist and discovering who they are without making them feel like they're put on the spot mm -hmm. will be really the, <clears throat> the way that we can alter that structure and find new and better ways to let people just express themselves. Um, and that's really exciting just because I feel like people are open to the idea of what is that new normal? What, right. what does that mean for all of us? And how do we recategorize what it means to come out or what, what it even means just to express who you are and not feel like you're pinpointed or put on the spot right. in the middle of a room? You know, I come from a, a Christian background, but I was always a part of a very progressive Christian community. So when I went to a conservative college, I was like, what is this? Because I was so confused by the attitude and the rhetoric that was used specifically towards the LGBTQ community, because that's not how I was raised in my house. And so for conversations that you have had or people that are part of the LGBTQ community that have suffered from church hurt, how have you personally healed? Because I know Molly, you came from a religious background. How have you personally healed from that? And how have you also had conversations with other people that are trying to heal from that church hurt? Yeah, I think, yeah, because I grew up, I grew up Mormon. I grew up in Utah. And um, I think it was, I was cool with like, once I kind of got past my, I am who I am and I love myself for who I am, like I, other people's opinion and, and what they would throw at me and use the Bible as a weapon rather than guidance, like it would, it would, it didn't affect me as much, but I think it would, it would affect maybe my mom. Mm -hmm. She was nervous. You know what I mean? So I think having the conversations with my mom was being like, it's okay. It's okay to be gay. It's okay to be trans. It's like, you know, like I'm not going to go to hell is basically what I had to convince my mom. Cause she was very set what was in what she was taught. Mm -hmm. And I think what was really cool is in Utah, there was a Bishop who um, his son came out as gay. And that was really kind of a monumental moment for, um, people who practice being Mormon and it, it, my, it like made headlines. My mom sent it to me and she sent me the thing. She goes, Oh, look, the Bishop's son is gay. And I was like, yeah, I was like, see, I told you, I was like, God isn't going to make somebody a Bishop and then say that gay's wrong and then give them a gay kid. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, it was, it was definitely, um, it was definitely more of a conversation with my mom, yeah. you know, to let her know that I'm going to be okay. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I think, like I said before, yeah, a lot of people use faith as a weapon and it's yeah. meant for guidance, you know, which is really. Well, I actually, I think they use, they use religion as a weapon. I think faith yeah. is how, is, yeah. is, is a different yeah. thing, you know. You're right, you're right. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it's just, it was so crazy to me having those conversations and I love the church community that I'm a part of. We, you know, we're very accepting, very affirming and have just something I've never understood. I that's a whole different conversation and podcast about <laughs> right <Christianity and> conservative <laughs> religion. I will have you guys back to talk about that because it's they something do I just don't understand and never have understood, especially yeah. if you say God doesn't make mistakes. So why are you, you know what I mean? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There are so many, there's so many questions. Like I would love to just see a full like thought complete and like, let's, yeah, that's yeah. a good we should, Yeah, we yeah. should. Yeah. Talk about that's crazy. So, okay, so with Pride House LA, you it seems like the focus is really about celebration in, in expression and identity, but are there any plans to maybe dive into deeper issues that are within the LGBTQ community that need to be talked about? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so we're gonna listen, I think, to our fans a lot. Like, I think that, really, that yeah. we really wanna continue building our fan base and our relationship and see what they want, right? Because mm -hmm. it's like Garrett was saying, that online audience is completely different, all new faces, all different new human beings. So it's, I think we're gonna really kind of work on our outreach to connect to our community that's with us right now and be like, where, what's going on? What like, as we about? grow, when we go through those growing pains, like, what are topics that you're excited to hear about? What are conversations that have been difficult to, to crack on? open? Like, right. who can we speak to on the other side of the fence that could maybe open up minds or create new conversations or break down some kind of whatever barriers are in our community? Because I think ultimately, throughout our community, everybody wants to show that love, that support, that allyship. Yeah. like. 
and that's not even just for the LGBT community. It's 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 beyond that. It's yeah. people from different minority groups. It's yeah. we really want to be a celebration of being of not just celebrating uniqueness, but also um, information and education, and without it feeling like you're you have some kind of you're allowed to ask the questions. You might not know how to ask it right, but the important thing is that you're asking and that we yeah. can have a discussion about it. And yeah. there's no, Express. as long as you're you're coming from an honest, like heartful place, not hurtful, heartful, that is like, <laughs> you are asking the question because you want to be an ally. You want to be a friend to somebody who's from a different community and how can we educate each other and how how can we best support each other and what are the best practices in doing so? Yeah, I also think too, um, the reason why our content right now is, is so celebratory and so loud and happy is because we this just happened, you know, like we're still in the honeymoon phase of this. So and it hasn't now, even been a year. Yeah, I know. Now we're getting a high <laughs> mark where we're just celebrating, but definitely Pride House is going to be that kind of like outlet to kind of dive deeper to like I I definitely feel like we want to address those hard issues we just haven't been in that mindset quite yet we're still like on this high of just celebrating and all that but I think the more exactly what they were saying the more we grow we want to kind of dive into those you know different Mm -hmm. different roots and Mm -hmm. and express we love learning yeah yeah, and and I think it's fun to show people how to learn I think that's fun and we love asking our fans like what do you want to see Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah what's important to you because we only exist because of you Right. right. We became a thing because we just loved being around each other, but more importantly, because everybody blew her. Because we recognized <laughs> recognize we were family. Yeah, which is a beautiful thing to see. And I think people need to see that and feel they want to feel like they're a part of your family when they're watching that. Mm-hmm. I think that that's what's so beautiful. The other thing that I, w- I was going to say that I'm glad that you mentioned, Garrett, is because I talk about intersectionality a lot, is that making sure it's also an inclusive place for people of color because that's a whole nother, you know, topic in terms yeah. of your race and your culture and wanting to be included. And when you're a member of two marginalized groups, you can already imagine just kind of the push and pull of what you're feeling. So I really love that you said that because I think that that's super important. Obviously, being a black female, you know, I want to make sure that I can say to any of my, you know, black brothers and sisters that are also members of the LGBT community, go to Pride House LA, check out Pride House LA, you're going to feel so And we say that a lot too, like, and we, we're just like the four, like, kind of main people. For we sure. have a group of people that Come are in. very diverse. And it feels like a YMCA almost. And we want, we want, like, kids to look at our kids and adults and literally every single person to go on our page and look and be like oh that person's like me that person mm-hmm. looks like me that mm-hmm. you know what I mean like all different shapes colors size, what everything. you see is so important we learn so much through our eyes it's like so if you think about the first time there was a gay character on television it was monumental right so I like for me specifically I want to make sure that our message to the group is everybody can be seen in our in our group rather than just you know, a bunch of attractive people posting a TikTok in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thank you, Laurie. Right. Thank you. And with the pandemic winding down, we're all really excited to have a couple new members who yeah. are like official members. Yeah. yeah. That's we're, something that now that we're able yeah. to, we can we, have we can safely be around other people. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But when this first started, you know, we we were just excited to become a thing. And right from the beginning, we were like, all right, if this is going to be real, as soon as the world starts opening back up, we're going to start accepting applications. Like, yeah, yeah, we yeah. want to feel like we, like... And we have a little bit more understanding, too, because this whole... whole is that the Wild West? It feels, <laughs> this whole TikTok content house is so, like, I feel like a pirate. <laughs> 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 I love it. I love it. So looking for the into the rest of this year, what are some ultimate goals that you have for Pride House LA? Ultimate. ultimate. Well, things ultimate. I can speak like to perfect world excited. situations. Yeah. Love that. Well, what we're excited for um we have a few things that are coming out. We have an apparel line that we're excited to launch. Okay. Jewelry. We're, yeah, we have some cute jewelry right? that work. We have our YouTube series. channel that's so coming cool. to fruition. We're building the Instagram. We have um a deal we're signing with Studio 71 currently. For our own podcast. For our, a podcast that we can start bringing on guests and start actually- And you have to be there. Yeah! yeah. Um, <laughs> that we're excited to start, like you kind of um, cracked open for the conversation for us. Yeah. Um, we're excited to start having like more difficult conversations yeah. and yeah. even talk about current events just cause that's fun too. But yeah. we uh-huh. really do yeah, want to make sure that we, we um, we're tackling those things because we can't really represent the community unless we start at 
asking, asking the community yeah. questions they want answered. Yeah. And I think then like on the flip side of things, like our ultimate, ultimate goal would be to change the perspective of what our community is. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't want people to think that every gay person is just this like feminine guy that wears rainbows and then like every trans guy, look, you know what I mean? Something like it, Break it, the boundaries. Yeah, to bit. show like, look, like people don't think I'm gay at all because, oh, why would this white blonde girl, you know, be gay? I thought you were supposed to look like this, you know what I mean? Right, right. Kind of breaking that barrier is that, you know, we exist the exact same way that yeah. everyone else does. And I think difference is beautiful. Like yeah. being different is what actually makes us pop. Like and a that's rainbow. yeah, and that exactly like the rainbow. And yeah. that's that's why representation matters again. Yeah, you know? Yeah. And just showing them the ultimate goal would be LGBTQ is what you know. What do you think, Jeff? I wanna know Jeff is ultimate. Well, yeah. I was just gonna say like it's just cool to like talk about our experiences so that people feel like a part they're, they're part of our family and like mm -hmm. absolutely like, and also I feel like you guys are from at least from my vantage point, you are becoming the thing that maybe you didn't have when you were going through your own journeys. And I think that that's such a beautiful thing because like for myself, I was very lucky to grow up and see a lot of powerful black women in, in my, just ha my mom in general, but like my aunts and like cousins and stuff. But I know there are so many black girls in other communities that didn't have that. And so that's what I'm you know, aspiring to be. So I think that's exactly what you all are doing. And I think that that's an incredible thing. Oh, thank you so much. That was really nice. Oh, of course, of course. So with your podcast, do you have a, are you just calling it Pride House LA or do you have a specific title of it? I think we're just probably going to call I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Pride House LA. I'll just put that thought in your our, head now. Uh, It'll be our next TikTok post. What yeah. should we name yeah. our <laughs> yeah, Pride House? Yeah, Pride Cast. Yeah, yeah. Pride Cast. Oh my yeah, God, Pride I love that actually. <laughs> I think we're still so new. We have to keep branding at Pride House yeah. LA, you know? For yeah. sure, but, for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to listen to that. Now, individually, I'm going to ask you, before we, we come to the end of our conversation, what specific issues within the LGBT community, and it could be, um, you know, let's say politically even, do you really want to address and focus on? Like, what is something that you are very, very passionate about? I know you talked a little bit about, like, stereotypes and breaking down those barriers, yeah. but are there anything else that you would like to really address that, that is close to your heart? Yeah. yeah. I think, um, yes, yes, you have an answer, and here it comes. Um, I just want our community to continue to express in the arts. Like, I really do believe we're so gifted, and so we, you know, when you take that step to being different, there's this confidence, and I think that when you have that confidence, it's really nice to have a form of practice, whether that's illustration or dance or acting or skits or makeup. So I want my community to continue to renaissance and flourish and create. I love that. Yeah. I think for me, and I'm sure Jack and I will probably have a similar one, um, is just electing people into office to make sure that our rights are protected. valid and protected, yeah. um, especially obviously like with our relationship, Jack is trans. So um, we want to make sure that Jekka is good, you know, I mean, there's, me a, lot, there's a, a big topic right now for um, trans women uh, in sports. That's um mm. uh, it talks about like a lot. And so I feel like I've just been trying to like look up as much as I can on that just because mm -hmm. I feel like that's really it's a really big topic. Yeah, yeah. electing topic. people that will Rep will, will represent us and have have us in mind. Yeah. You know what I mean? And also everyone, knowing that when new representatives everyone. come in that they can't just revoke whatever is passed. Like yeah. right. like what just happened in Tennessee is abysmal. Yeah. Um yeah. I would say for me personally, that's one of the topics that I'd love to, if we had, if, if our podcast was live right now, I'd be like, Hey, let's talk about that. Am I allowed to swear on this Absolutely. right now? Absolutely. All right, great. I'd love to talk about this bullshit in Tennessee. Like, and then we can open up the, the conversation. Yeah, and that's what it is. You can't really call it anything else. <laughs> and then, but then on top of it, like, I know something I'd love to crack open. And I think is a really interesting topic that um, finding ways that people within our community and other minority groups can kind of, um, oh, take ownership over our power in the entertainment industry yeah. because yes. something that I think people I've been getting I've been working on getting into the producing side a lot the past like five years and something I've heard a lot from producers is they can't attach LGBT talent LGBTQIA talent to starring roles in movies alone just to get funding because of outside um, foreign sales. Mm 
Mm. And what's interesting is, is they say that they, there's no one LGBTQIA star that they can attach to a movie that has enough foreign value to get any movie made. There's not one person mm. that any producer will tell me. And I'm sitting here thinking like, we have brilliant stars throughout different different genres yeah. that there is absolutely no reason so something that we could do to take back our power yeah. actively yeah. is to make them care more about domestic revenue and what we yes. can do to make them care more about domestic revenue is attach an lgbtqia star to, to a movie and get everyone in our community to over over buy that movie because right now they're saying any movie that they've attached a star from the queer community they never make their money back on it so they won't make the movies anymore so it's that much harder for it's us. Like to it's like it's not about films. that person. It probably just wasn't a good movie. Right. Well, writing. Right. But, <laughs> but even still, like they're worried about the prejudice overseas. So right. let's right. We let's make the best of it. We matter yeah. worldwide, darling. <laughs> so like, it's similar with a lot of black actors as well, because yes. they think that it's not marketable to have a black person or any person of color, honestly, as the lead in young. for you know across the seas, which is just crazy to me like come on it's not anyone can we get over this like there's not one type of person to connect with so i love that you're trying to fix that because it does need to be fixed there are different walks of life representation matters we have to see different narratives as well also i, I kind of want to follow up on this because do you ever feel that the narratives specifically for lgbtqi characters are just kind of one note it's always the same thing i'm always kind of saying yeah. these stereotypes like kind of yeah. breaking those ideas yeah and these tropes like these classic tropes that we just always yeah. go to and it's just like hopefully we can continue like you were even saying the writing like it's, and that's why i want people to create more collaborate like yeah. allow more ideas to come in it doesn't have to just be one like there's so much um, like why fun with sharing like why can't a person of color be the all-american girl next door why can't mm -hmm. a gay guy be the, the all-american girl next door yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. you know what i mean like why do, it, it's just such a weird stereotype and then if you put a gay character in they have to act gay and you're like yeah. what does acting gay mean right. I didn't book a job one time because they were like you don't look trans enough he was, was like, like what I, I've been in enough time and they're like you think we're sassy and I'm like I'm I'm already a bitch I don't know what you want from me but like the thing is the only way we can really affect change is by affecting Hollywood pockets yes at the end of the day Hot it's pockets. about their money all they care about is making their money back from TV shows and movies yeah. if you want to affect change we have to uh, with throughout our communities we have to say you might not want to watch the movie but right. you need to buy it because we're never exactly. going to change it. we're never going to be in control yeah. of our narrative until we start affecting where this money goes and which we have choices with our money use our choices be smart with them Chick -fil -A. Chick -fil -A. <laughs> well let everyone listening know where they can follow you and keep up with all the things that you're doing at pride house la please you can follow us at pride house la on instagram and on tiktok and also my tiktok's molly gray my tiktok is ken Floyd underscore mine is garrett clayton 91 and mine's jacka jane <laughs> Awesome. And we love you so much. It was such a blast chatting with you. Uh, thank you. Of course. of course, and to the listeners, make sure you subscribe to We Need to Talk, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye. Yay!